Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Journey of the Master podcast. Today, we are talking about you as creator within your own creation. I'm so excited for this conversation with you all today. Thank you for being here for everyone who is joining live. And if you're joining us for one of the replays, we're so happy you are here. And hello to everyone who is on live. Hi, Catherine from Oahu, Melinda in Texas, Christina, hello, Julie in Utah, Barbara, Arizona. Uh, yes, Christina, I know you're in Texas too. Hi, Denai in Canada, Melissa in Tennessee. Carol and Sedona. We're so happy you are all here. If you are new to our podcast or you are new to me and this work, uh, well, for starters, my name is Sarah Landon and it's so nice to meet you. And this work is about sharing the wisdom of the council that I channel in order to help us all to really master our human experience and live our purpose here on earth. If you're new to channeling, I got to tell you, First off, everyone is a channel in their own way, and we all express it really uniquely. For most of our lives, we don't realize that we are tuning in to a higher connection or a higher level of consciousness from time to time when we're really focused or in the moment, or we have one of those times where you may be talking with a friend and you say, oh my gosh, I don't know what I just said, but all of a sudden you look over and your friends in tears are really moved or you feel chills. To me, that's you opening up to a higher level of consciousness and awareness. And for me, I've just practiced that to such a place where it's very natural for me to verbally channel and tune in to a higher collective consciousness that has a grander perspective of this human experience. You know, most of what we go through in our life is what others have taught us is possible or what we have seen others do. But as we elevate our consciousness, so much more becomes available to us. So we have an amazing community of people who have been part of this work for quite some time and some that are new to us. But you'll hear me reference the teachings as teachings that come from the council. And you can find out much more about channeling and the council at our website, sarahlandon.com. It's an opportunity for you to explore your own connection to opening up to intuition and higher levels of consciousness just by being in the incredible energy that the council brings through and that we create here together today. So on these podcasts, we share some of our favorite teachings from the council that have truly transformed our lives. And we also share these teachings in our monthly newsletter, which you can subscribe to for free at sarahlandon.com. And it gives you all of the exciting events that we have going on every month, as well as a featured teaching like you are creator within your own creation. So before we begin, I think we really have to talk about the formula for creating our reality or understanding our relationship to reality before we can really talk about how you are creator within your own creation. In fact, the council says the answer to every question you ever ask can be answered with that one simple awareness. You are creator within your own creation of your reality, and we're going to talk about how that is. So first off, to explore this formula for our relationship to reality, the thoughts that you are thinking and the stories you are telling yourself about yourself, about your life, about those you're in relationships with, and the beliefs you have about your possibilities or your situation or your struggles or your hardships, all of these things are affecting us. The thoughts you think, the stories you tell, the beliefs you hold are affecting your emotions. So just to break this down to make it easy, the thoughts that you are thinking are affecting your emotions. Your emotions are affecting the way that you feel. And we are feeling beings. That is the truth of who we are. Most of us are perceiving our reality through our limited physical senses, what you see, what you hear, what you taste, what you touch, what you smell. And I would even say thinking is a perceiving mechanism. But we are perceiving our reality through our physical human senses. And so we don't understand that who we really are is a feeling being. And yet people say things like, I just had a feeling. 
I just had a feeling or I could just feel it wasn't right or I could just feel this was the one or it was meant to be. So at the core of it, we really are feeling beings and that's who we are. And so when your emotions are affecting how you feel, they are also affecting your vibration. We talk a lot about vibration. We talk a lot about raising your vibration. And many of you may identify with this knowing that you're here to help positively contribute to raising the vibration our, of our collective human consciousness. So the thoughts that you're thinking affect your emotions. Your emotions affect the way that you feel, which is what is determining your vibration. Your vibration is congruent to the level of consciousness you're in. And the level of consciousness you're in is what's really determining what is possible for you. So your the way that you feel affects your or determines your vibration and your level of consciousness, which determines your experience of reality and the reality that you are creating. So at any point in time, if you look at your reality and it is not what you want it to be, or you are feeling awful, or you're in this level of consciousness where there's just lack and limitation and fear. Anytime you catch yourself, any place in the process, it's perfect. But stop and take a deep breath and go back to the thought that you are thinking. Because that's where the disharmony is coming from. The thoughts that you're thinking, the story you're telling, the belief you're holding about yourself or someone else is what is affecting your emotions, which affects the way that you feel, which determines your vibration and your level of consciousness, which is where you are experiencing and creating your reality. So some people might say it's just so hard to constantly manage your thoughts. And it is when we're running around stressed out overwhelmed trying to figure everything out and my best guidance to you is to really become comfortable with the power of slowing down and coming into the moment we are in the process of doing a wonderful live course right now called Grand Manifestations. And one of the sessions in this is talking about new levels of our power. And our power is so incredibly important. But all of our power is in the now moment. When you're in the past and you're resentful or feeling guilty or upset, you have no power in that moment when you are focusing on the past. And when you're stressed and anxious and worried about the future, you have no power in that moment over creating your future. And so when you really understand how important your presence is, your power in the moment, you begin to find it much, much easier to be aware of the thoughts that you are thinking and the stories you're telling yourself. And so many times we deem ourselves powerless over our circumstances and our conditions and our ability to create our life the way we want it to be because of the thoughts that we're thinking and the story we're telling us or the beliefs that we have. So being aware of how you're giving your power away to the thoughts that you're thinking about yourself or about others, be aware of how you give your power away to old stories or to limited beliefs about yourself and what's possible for you. It doesn't feel very good to be powerless. It doesn't feel very good to feel like you have no ability to change your life and your circumstances. But I promise you and I assure you, no matter who you are and what you're experiencing in your life, you absolutely have the power when you understand what we're talking about here today to create your reality and to transform your life to be everything that you want it to be, including your relationships, your health, your well-being, your finances, your business, your money, your service to the world. All of these are opportunities for you to really come into your power and understand this formula for creating your reality. And some might say, well, I, I tried that and it didn't work. Well, sometimes what happens is in the moment, we shift the thought. And for a moment, we feel a little bit better. 
but then we go right back to a conditioned response or a conditioned reaction or trigger. And so really practice slowing down. I am the first person to tell you that when someone's like, slow down, I'm like, no, but I have really practiced this to the place where I understand how powerful it is to really slow down. We are in a time of coming into whole new levels of our power, of whole new levels of love and relationships, of abundance and well-being, and of creativity and inspiration. And that's all of the things we're talking about in our current course, Grand Manifestations. And if you're watching this live, you still have the opportunity to join that. If you're watching it sometime in the future, all of our courses are still available at sarahlandon.com and you can find them there as well if this is something that resonates with you. But understand that when you elevate your vibration, your consciousness, and these whole new worlds open up to you, all sorts of things become possible for you that you may never have been aware of before. But it all comes back to your ability to be in your power in the moment and be aware of the thoughts that you're thinking. And I'll give you a couple of my favorite tips about the thoughts that you are thinking. Sometimes I just have to say to myself, stop it. Just stop. Just stop. I have a thought going, I have a story going, I have a conversation going on in my head about <laughs> with someone that's not even there. And sometimes I just have to stay, say, stop it and just stop and take some deep breaths and come back in the moment. Another thing that really helps is to say the thoughts you're thinking out loud. <laughs> you will quickly realize how ridiculous your thoughts sound when you actually say them out loud. When you take that rambling thought that's been playing on autopilot in your head out of your head and you say it out loud, you realize it's just silly. It's just ridiculous. But here's what you can do. And I'm telling you, it has the power to transform your life and your reality very, very quickly. When you start speaking out loud the thoughts that you want to think, the stories you want to tell about your life and the people in it and your opportunities and your abundance and your well-being and your joy, when you start saying those things out loud, immediately you begin to raise your your feelings and your vibration into a level of consciousness where in that moment you are beginning to create a new reality. So Thoughts are really important, and it's not about managing every thought every moment of every day, but when you catch yourself feeling awful throughout the day, stop and go back to the thought that you were thinking. If you feel like you're in a low vibration, it's coming from the thoughts that you're thinking. It's coming from the story you tell yourself, and some of that might be, well, I'm feeling like I'm in a really low vibration because I'm just exhausted today. I'm exhausted and I'm really tired. And if you're anything like me, <laughs> sometimes when I'm in that place, the thought that I'm actually thinking is you should be doing something. You're supposed to be doing something. There's so much to get done and I'm tired. I don't, I don't have the energy, but I'm supposed to, right? And that's what's going on in my head. That's what's affecting my emotions and the way that I feel which is affecting my vibration, which is creating this reality of not feeling good and feeling exhausted and overwhelmed and stressed. Go back to the thought. And if you choose to pick a thought, a story, a belief where this is happening for you and you go back and empower yourself in your thinking and in that moment, you might say something like this. Everything is perfect. I'm exactly where I need to be. My body is regenerating and rejuvenating itself. And the very highest thing I can be doing in this moment is resting. Because when the energy does come, I will be inspired. It'll all work out perfectly, easily, effortlessly. And when the energy is there, I will know. And the same is true with your finances. 
We have had so many discussions about this lately, especially in our master's class program and in our grand manifestations course, where we talk about these ways that we give our power away and our beliefs that we have carried for lifetimes about money, abundance, prosperity, wealth. And when we really start to look at the thoughts and the stories we have, and we begin to choose a new thought, you instantly manifest a better feeling, which elevates your vibration, which raises your consciousness, which in that moment creates a new reality for you. When we talk about creating your reality, we are talking about your manifestations, what you're creating. Some of that is physical, but the most important part of that is vibrational or a feeling state. And so when you notice that you're not feeling good, that's so important to catch that and come back to the thoughts so that you can instantly manifest that which you really want, which we'll talk about more in a minute. Relationships are another area of an opportunity to really practice mastering, creating your reality. You don't get to choose for any other but you do get to choose the reality that you create for you. And especially when we're in relationships with uh, people in our family or our significant other or children or people we're in close contact with in our business environment, like coworkers or team members, we oftentimes think that they are part of our reality. And if we can't control how they feel or how they're acting, it affects us and and you might find yourself feeling really frustrated and wishing your spouse would change or your spouse might be going through something difficult in their life with one of their coworkers or their family members or their children and all of a sudden now you're stressed out now all of a sudden you're overwhelmed now all of a sudden your ability to create peace and harmony in your own life you believe you can't have because this person you're in a close relationship with isn't experiencing the same reality that you want to have for yourself. And I'll tell you, there's just no better tip. <laughs> there just isn't than, oh, hello to the little fly. <laughs> Mark, I told you about that fly before we started. <laughs> uh, anyway, most powerful tip about this, and I cannot say it enough, and if you heard me say it to you every single day, and you, if you practiced it, oh my gosh, I'm just telling you, it has the power to change your life. It has mine many times, and it's still a practice, and there's still times that I go into my head, and I'm arguing with someone on, in my head, and I just have to say, stop, and I just have to say, I send you love. I send you love. There's only love because that is the truth. And any other thought that you're thinking or belief you have or story you're telling is based in limitation. It will affect your emotions, the way that you feel. It will determine your level of consciousness and vibration. And you will think you're powerless to create your reality the way you want it to be when you really do have the power. And love, as the council tells us, is the most transformational, most powerful force in all of the universe. So if you find yourself feeling awful about your relationships and thinking, well, how do I create a better reality or a different reality? Go back to the thought that you're thinking about yourself and about that person and just say, I send you love. I have a person in my life that is related to someone very close to me that is going through a very, very difficult time and causing a lot of uh, disharmony for themselves and disharmony for the people that love them. And I know I have no control over the situation. Of course, I want it to be better, but it does not determine my ability and it does not determine your ability to create peace for yourself in the moment. Instead of going into the story, instead of getting all entangled in what's going on, just send that person love. Just in your own mind, say, I send you love. Or if that person's in total disharmony, send them peace. Because the secret is, all of that energy is moving through your body first. 
So if you're in your head battling or arguing or warring with someone, whether you've ever met them or not, whether it's someone you've seen on TV or someone in politics, all of that energy is moving through you first. If you are arguing with someone you were in a relationship with 10 years ago that you've not seen since that time, but something triggered you to remember what happened with them, in that moment, you are denying yourself peace and harmony and love and joy and all those things you think you're saying to them in your head is really moving through your body. And your body doesn't know that you're not projecting that to it and to someone else, it has to move through you first. That energy has to move through you first. So the best thing you can do for yourself or for anyone is just send them love, send them peace. That's instant karma. That's actually what karma is. In that moment, whatever you think you're doing to someone else, you're actually doing to yourself. That's the definition of karma. So when you're sending love to yourself and that person, when you're sending peace and harmony to yourself and that person, that's what's creating your reality. Let's talk about instant manifestation because there are all sorts of experiences of creating your reality. There's the experience that you're creating the reality of some wonderful manifestation like a new home or a new business or a new job or having a child or a relationship or expanding those things in your life if you already do have them. And so there are manifestations or creations of reality that are physical and that it takes a bit of time for those things to manifest in your reality. But in the moment, you can instantly manifest anything that you want more of in your life. For example, Everything that we want is really about freedom, but especially money. I've asked this question many times. The council has asked this question many times. When someone wants more money, more abundance, more wealth in their life, what does that feel like? And I invite you to do so right now if it feels good to you. Go from your head into your heart. What does freedom feel like? If you're in a place that you can do so, you might even close your eyes. Go from your head. I like to imagine like a staircase from my head down into my heart. And while our brains and our minds are a magnificent thing, they're here. <laughs> we have these magnificent brains to run the systems of our body. Your respiratory, your endocrine system, your circulatory system to beat your heart and grow your hair and blink your eyes and to, to be this incredible storage capacity for all the experiences you have and all the different things that you perceive in your reality. But our hearts are really powerful. Your heart, as some say, is the seat of your soul. It is your power source. Your power is really in your heart. So when you go from your head down into your heart and you really get comfortable with this and you begin to integrate that, that mind, heart, soul connection, you will have so much power and you will feel so much more inspired in your life. So go from your head down into your heart. And if you're in a place that you can do so, closing your eyes, what does freedom feel like? First thing that comes to me is expansion expansiveness. It feels like flow. It feels like creativity and inspiration. It feels like beauty and adventure. It also feels like being your authentic self, the freedom to be who you really are. So Freedom. Feel into freedom in your heart, whatever that means to you. And when you really feel freedom in your heart, you feel that expansiveness, then align every cell of your body through your awareness and your intention to align with the feeling of freedom until you have aligned every cell in your body to feel that feeling of freedom 
Feel freedom in every part of your body, from the top of your head down to the bottom of your feet, not your fingertips. Align every cell of your body to the vibration, to the frequency of freedom. And now expand that and expand your awareness to the particles of infinite creation all around you, starting by the room that you're sitting in. Start with the room that you're sitting in and just expand your awareness and align every particle of creation in the room that you're sitting in to that feeling of freedom. And then expand it deep down into the earth beneath you. Expand it out around you. Expand it up above you. And keep going until you feel yourself expanding across the horizon and up to the sun and the moon and the stars. Just expanding your awareness and aligning every particle within this force field of consciousness that is you to align to that feeling, to the vibrational frequency of freedom. Because in this moment, through your focus and your awareness and your intention, you have just created freedom for yourself. In your reality, you have just created freedom. And this works with anything, peace, abundance, love, well-being, beauty, joy, whatever feels good to you. You can create that. And remember, you're a feeling being. Source, the divine, the universe, the ultimate creator is responding to that vibrational frequency. And in the moment, you are already creating in physical form the manifestation of everything that is the highest expression of all that you are and aligned to freedom, which can show up in all sorts of ways. And so it's so important to understand your power. It's so important to understand your ability to create your reality. It's important to understand the formula for how creating our reality works. The thoughts that you're thinking affect your emotions. Your emotions affect the way that you feel. The way that you feel determines your level of consciousness and your vibration, which is what's drawing your reality to you. As we've talked about in, in prior podcasts, the formula for uh, creating reality and really uh, understanding this as well as manifestation, the secret formula really for manifestation is your consciousness is what summons energy to manifest things in physical form. And so this is why I've heard this question many times. People say, I came upon the law of attraction and all of a sudden I just manifested all this stuff and now it's not working in the same way. Well, what happened was in you coming into a new level of awareness of information, you elevated your consciousness. In the elevation of your consciousness, you summoned all of this energy that's always been here for you that you were probably suppressing, plus you opened up to source energy, and things instantly began to manifest in physical form in your life. But here's the good news. You have the ability to consciously, intentionally elevate your consciousness and your awareness in any moment and really summon that energy that moves things into physical form for you. That's the secret formula for manifestation as the council tells us. Consciousness moves energy into form. And we have an amazing master's class program and some incredibly brilliant master's class members who after our live sessions that we do as part of the advanced master's class program every single Wednesday, we do a community call before and after where people talk about how they are living this wisdom, they connect, they meet others, uh, they share. It's just amazing. And uh, John in our master's class program was sharing along with Ryan 
and some others, uh, this, this understanding of energy, you know, when we're, we're suppressing energy, when we're in resistance, when we're resisting anything, we're resisting everything. So that what you're resisting is energy, the energy that is the creative source the energy that creates worlds, the energy that moves things from the formless into the form, the energy that that shifts your body from frustration into peace, harmony, and then joy. It's all energy. And all of it is your energy. And there's no limit to that energy. But we don't realize that through our thoughts and our beliefs and the stories we're telling ourselves that we are limiting the energy that's available to us. And that's why things don't show up in our life the way we want them to. And that's why we don't feel good sometimes. So when you've been in resistance, all the energy that you've, you've been holding down through that resistance, in addition to all the energy that you're summoning, when you elevate your consciousness and your awareness, all of it begins to work for you. And our master's class community was having an amazing conversation of this and examples of this. It's like when you let go of that resistance, not only do you open up and summon all the energy that's here for you, but all of the energy that you have been suppressing or resisting begins to flow. And so they kind of called it a double whammy that you get this extra boost of energy that allows for manifestation to happen very quickly. So remember that as well. Um, I just want to say hello to some people that are here. John, who we were just talking about. Hello, Susan, Francis. Uh, most all of these people I'm mentioning are part of our amazing Advanced Masters Class community. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Judah from Germany. It's so good to see you all. If you have any questions about this or statements that you would like to make uh, to add in your own experiences here, I'd love to read them and share them. Uh, that's really why we do this live is so that we can interact with all of you and, and read your comments and answer any questions that you have about creating your reality. So as I said, the council says the answer to every question you will ever ask is you are creator within your own creation. And so when you're asking this question, oh my gosh, uh, this is just terrible. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> First off, uh, you feel terrible because somehow you are putting your power outside of you. So remember in those moments, slow down, take some deep breaths, come into the moment. What's the thought that you are thinking that is denying your power to create your reality? This has been pretty profound for me in several areas of my life. And uh, it's so important to understand and hmm, take responsibility. It's courageous to take responsibility for your life and your reality. It's actually very powerful to take responsibility for your life, your reality, your thoughts. But here's the key without any judgment. I don't say that you have to take total responsibility and then go start judging yourself for the unwanted creations or the disharmony or the things that aren't the way you want them in your life. It's not about judgment at all. It's taking responsibility for yourself, that you are here to master your human experience and live your purpose on earth and create your life the way you want it to be. And nothing and no one can keep you from doing that. Everyone has this power. And it all comes back to the thoughts that you're thinking. And in what way are you giving your power away to something outside of you? And in that moment, when you take your power back and you begin to empower yourself, and one of my favorite affirmations from the council is, I am the power that loves me. I am the power that loves me. I am the power that loves me. And you could even expand that to be, I am the power that creates me. I am the power that creates me. I am the power. I am creator within my own creation. Whatever feels good to you. Remember that you can shift any circumstances or conditions by coming into the moment, 
being aware of the thought that you're thinking and how you're giving your power away in those thoughts, in those stories. Come into the moment, be present. All of your power is for you. Come back into your power. Start telling the story. And I mean, tell the story out loud. Speak the thoughts out loud. I did this recently with something in my life. It had just come to a place uh, where I was no longer willing for that particular reality to continue on the way it was. It had been months of sort of arguing with it in my head and uh, wanting to try to control it and figure it out. And I would continue to come back to this process. And I, I really wanted to claim that this is how it's going to be, but I didn't quite feel it. So I just kept practicing all of these things I'm sharing with you. And then I had a moment. I was actually coming out of the gym. I felt amazing. Uh, the energy was flowing. And I just sat down and said, this is done. And I, I asked for help from my higher self and the higher self of everyone involved. I demanded peace for myself. And I demanded that all interactions with me in my reality in my world were peaceful. And I asked for help from angels, the higher realms, the ascended masters, my soul, the soul of everyone else involved. And I just out loud said, this is how it's going to be. And I talked out loud and talked out loud about how my reality was going to be and felt it. And then I just let it go. And it's been a few weeks now. And that situation is absolutely peaceful in my life and continues to be. And this is some of the ways that we do not realize we have the power to create our reality. And it doesn't mean that you get to choose for any other, but you do get to choose for you. And that might mean having boundaries in your life. That might mean saying no. That might mean making some changes. That might mean setting your loved one down and letting them have their own journey. You send them love, but you don't try to fix it for them. And you don't try to be the person that makes it better for everyone. People want to be loved. They just want to be loved. And if your loved one or someone you're in a relationship with is going through a difficult time and you feel like it's affecting your reality, you have to remember your ability to instantly manifest peace for yourself and stay there and just love them. And you will find you have so much power to create your reality. And because your reality is peaceful and joyful and harmonious and beautiful, it's going to help those in your life to really remember that that's possible for them too. It's really important. So um, Melissa asked this question about letting go. I love this question. Hi, Melissa. How do you really let go though? <laughs> I get it. How do you really let go? And we have this conversation about surrender. We have this conversation about letting go. What does that really mean? <laughs> and you know, my classic is like, okay, I let it go. And then two seconds later, I'm like, hmm, I need to figure that out. <laughs> That's not letting go. <laughs> I can tell you. Don't go, all right, I'm letting it go. And then two seconds later, you're like, all right, what am I going to do here? I got to figure this out. I got to make something happen, right? When you let it go, you really let it go. But I think it helps to understand what you're letting it go to. First off, we're perceiving through our physical senses. We have no way of really perceiving what's really going on here. There is divine orchestration. Your soul is out ahead of you, orchestrating things on your behalf. There's so much more going on here that you can see. And I absolutely know that. And there's something inside of you too that does. There's some part of you that knows that you have a higher self. And you have a soul. And so does everyone else. And they are in a state of knowing that there's only love. And they are out ahead of you orchestrating things on your behalf always. So what I'm letting it go to, when I say I'm letting it go, I'm letting it go and I'm letting that part of me, my soul, my higher self, your soul, your higher self, Melissa, who knows what's in the highest and best good of all, I'm letting that part of me guide me and show me the way. And 
I have come to this place where I don't even want to try to figure things out anymore. I, for me, it's the concept of giving it to God. I give it to God. I give it to the light. And I do this practice and you can uh, find a beautiful meditation on our website called the return it to the light uh, visualization process where you really do move these things that you want to let go of out from you into a space where you can fully receive the gifts that they have been that they have given you and then you can return it to the light. You can return it to the light so that it can be recreated through love in the highest and best good. I think all of us would agree. We really do want what is in our highest good. And yet our humans are never going to figure that out. So to me, letting go is letting go and giving it to that higher part of me and knowing that I will know if there's something that I'm meant to do. Council says, nothing will stop you from being, nothing will stop you from doing what you're called to do when you're called to do it. Nothing will stop you from doing what you're called to do when you're called to do it. So let it go. Give it to your soul, your higher self. Know that they're out ahead of you orchestrating things on your behalf. Follow the energy. Let the light guide the way. And know that nothing will stop you when it's divine right time or when you're really being called to do what you're called to do. So um, I hope that's helpful, Melissa. Um, hi, Ryan. Ryan says, uh, I have felt a strong resonance with Ascended Master St. Germain and the I am presence with me. Do you know of the, do you know of the physical ascended masters? Um, do you know the physical ascended masters? Um, here's what the council says about all of that. The ascended masters really are an extension of us. So when you feel called to St. Germain, for example, or uh, uh, Mother Mary or any of those, you are coming into a new level of power of yourself. What is it about St. Germain that you really resonate with? Uh, is it uh, alchemy, um, that I am presence, for example? So it is that part of you guiding you to that new level of awareness and consciousness that's going to open you up to a whole new level of energy. And one of the things I share in our semi-private channeling course where I take people through an intimate experience of learning how to channel, to connect to their guides, ascended masters, higher self, uh, and their own collectives, is to really understand that when these things come in for you, if you're feeling a strong resonance to resonance to um, an ascended master or a particular teaching, then follow it. I have people that say I, I felt really called to Archangel Michael and follow that guidance. Follow it and see where it leads you. Follow it and see what it wants to show you. And if you're interested in our semi-private channeling group, we have uh, one coming up. It's group 12, which starts on May 3rd, five consecutive weeks uh, through May 31st. This will be the last semi-private channeling group that we do for at least six months. Um, but if you're interested in learning how to channel yourself, uh, either your higher self or your guides or higher collectives, many people have tuned into this to really open up to um, their own ability to paint and create music and poetry. Um, all sorts of things. And, and really, ultimately, channeling has completely changed my life because of the relationship with my own connection to source that is with you in every moment. So uh, if you're interested in that, you can find out more at sarahlandon.com. But thanks for the question, Ryan. And I think uh, I don't, we, we have a Ryan in our master's class community. And um, I just saw the name Ryan, kind of assumed it was. But Ryan, uh, nice to meet you. We're happy you're here. Um, uh, let's see, Catherine, I was in such fear over a situation. The council told me to give it to the light and then let it go. I did. I trusted and they gave it to the light and let it go. My situation was resolved within four days. I love that. Uh, I think there's many people in our community that would uh, echo that as well. But again, <laughs> when you let it go, let it go. Let it go and then go do something that brings you joy. Let it go and go do something that's fun for you. Letting go is not, I let it go. And then two seconds later, you're stressed and worried and trying to figure it out. Let it go and really let it go. And you will see the power that you have 
to summon to you everything you need and more and the highest expression of all that you are or the highest and best good in all situations. I've been practicing something that the council shared with me recently about, you know, when you say I have a challenge or I have an issue going on or I have this problem right now, right? And to change that and say an opportunity or a gift or a blessing. And maybe you can't get to gift or blessing in this moment, but maybe you can see it as an opportunity. And the council says, everything's happening for us to help us remember our power and to bring us into new levels of our power and so that we can experience new levels of our own power. So begin to see these things that are going on as opportunities. I think as Catherine would share with you, the thing that looked like a situation that was unresolved when she elevated her consciousness, which summoned a whole new uh, energy that could allow a whole new outcome, that was an opportunity for her to really master her life experience and how we relate to life and how we create our reality. So thank you for sharing that, Catherine. Um, hi, Jen. Uh, Jen says, I started telling myself out loud about my perfect day after watching one of your videos recently. Feels really good. I don't know what it is, but there is something amazing about speaking out loud, about telling your story out loud, about sharing your beliefs out loud. And you may feel like you're making them up a little bit, even if it's I'm smart, I am worthy, I am abundant, I am loved, I am guided, whatever it is, when you start to say those things out loud, you can feel it in your body, which is the perfect example of this formula we've been talking about. The thought that you're thinking when it's a good thought feels really good, raises your vibration, and all of a sudden, your reality is beautiful, where five minutes ago, when you were feeling unsupported and uh, not like what you uh, wanted happening. And, and, and no, it always happens like this for me. All of a sudden, your, your reality is not beautiful and abundant and full of love. Shifting the way that you think affects everything. John says, I am the power as free as can be. That is me. I love that one too. I am the power as free as can be. That is me. Beautiful. Um, what about uh, but there are also teachings that say that the more intense the emotion and the frequency, the more powerful the manifestation. Does that not contrast with letting go? Uh, first off, if you're in resistance, if you're resisting anything at all, you're resisting everything. And ultimately what you're resisting is the energy that's here to create worlds for you. So if you're in resistance of everything, anything at all, whatever you're in resistance of, is actually affecting your emotions and your frequency. So when you're in resistance, let it go. And you know this may be yet another uh, iteration of that, but one of the things that the council says is even when you have what you want, even when that manifestation is there, that big, grand, amazing manifestation that you've waited your whole life for, even when you have that, even when that is your reality, let it go. And what I simply mean by that is don't grasp on, don't try to control it. Don't all of a sudden go into fear because you've manifested this thing and now you're afraid it's going to go away. That's resistance. That is holding you in a level of consciousness and vibration that is creating a reality. And that reality, you've already lost that manifestation, even though it's right there, because now you're in fear of losing it. So even in the dream come true moments, let it go, which means don't try to control it. Don't try to grasp onto it. Don't go into fear of losing it. Just know that what's meant for you will come to you. It's that old saying, you know, if you love something, set it free. That doesn't mean you kick it out of the house, right? <laughs> set it free and let it be. And if it belongs to you, it will be there. When, and, and really what that means is when the energy is there, it will be there. If the energy moves somewhere else and that's in the highest expression or that's in your highest and best good, that's really what you want anyway. So I hope that's helpful. Um, uh, okay, here's the good one. What if you're in resistance to a pharmaceutical drug? 
And uh, this is really good because to me, again, this is a way that we're creating our reality. Judgment of things, judgment of ourself. Um, this reminds me of a story of one of our master's class members who's just this incredibly powerful uh, being and bright, beautiful light in the world. And she very vulnerably shared uh, that she was really judging herself because even as she is an enlightened, um, incredibly spiritual person, uh, she has struggled with depression and she has tried to go off her depression medication, um, but it really doesn't feel well when she does. And she felt a lot of judgment and shame um, being as spiritual as she is and evolved as she is that she's on antidepressants and pharma on a pharmaceutical drug. And the council's answer to her was really, really interesting. Whether it's a pharmaceutical drug or food or anything else that you're putting in your body, when you are in resistance to it, you are creating fear, you're creating shame. And that's so important to understand that that judgment and resistance of what you're putting in your body is the energy you're putting in your body. They say the level of consciousness you're in when you put something in your body is far more important than what you're actually putting in your body. So their answer to her was get into the highest vibration, make it a sacred celebration. Don't judge yourself. Don't feel any shame about it. Shift all of that to making it a sacred experience. Imagine it as a magic pill or sacred pill that's going to go into your body and bring light and love to every cell of your body. Get into the highest vibration, bless it, say thank you, put it into your body, love yourself, see it as light going into every cell of your body and infusing every cell with peace and feeling good. And do not do it so that... Uh, you can all of a sudden wake up one day and be off the medication. However, I have seen this many, many, many times. One of which was a very similar example of someone who was a smoker and felt embarrassed about it and a lot of guilt about it. The council gave her the same answer. Make it a sacred experience. Sit down, make it beautiful, bless it, enjoy it, feel good about it. And within a couple of weeks of doing that, she reported that she was hardly smoking at all. And within a couple of months, she just realized one day I woke up and I just didn't want it anymore. I felt good. And she completely stopped smoking because she wasn't in resistance and judgment and shame. It's a vicious cycle. So when you're in resistance about a, a pharmaceutical drug, shift your consciousness, which shifts the energy around it, which will give you a whole new experience of reality. So I hope that's helpful. Um, also, I will say on this, um, you are the power of you. Your body will tell you what it wants if you allow it. And if you're entangled with everyone else's judgments about what you should do and what you're supposed to put in your body and what drugs you should be taking, slow down and make some space for yourself. Love your body. It is intelligent. It will communicate with you. If you ask your body, is this in your highest and best good? Or how can I support you in feeling your best? Begin to have this conversation with your own body instead of everyone else telling you what you should do. There may be some guidance there for you. I hope that's helpful, Oscar. Um, thank you. Uh, Jen says, oh, I needed to hear that. I have a guy who feels perfect for me, but fear of losing him um, before even getting him has me in a state of upheaval the past couple of months. Letting go now. Perfect example, Jen. And we can see this play out in all, again, when we take radical responsibility for our lives and Understanding from the level of consciousness you're in now, you may choose something very different. Uh, your relationships are very different, but you don't have to judge yourself to take responsibility as Jen did for, oh, that's not what I want to continue to create as my reality. Being in fear of losing someone before you're even in a relationship with them, uh, yeah, creates a lot of upheaval, right? So 
when you're in a relationship with someone, the second you try to grasp on and control them, the second you try to tell them what they should do and that you try to make them the way you want them to be, and you're, you're trying to control everything because you don't want to lose them, right? That's not going to be a very harmonious, loving relationship. Even if it does last, it's not based in fully being in your power and them fully being in their power and being free to create their reality. And, you know, nothing's going to stop two people that have this energetic connection that just want to be together, right? So that energy, again, all comes from your level of consciousness. And that's why a lot of times when people fall in love, they're just, they're in this awareness of the perfection of that person, but they're really experiencing the perfection of themselves, right? And when we allow that uh, falling in love state with anything, whether it's a job or a home or a relationship or anything, when we just are in that surprise and delight and excitement and curiosity and enjoyment, and we see that person is just absolutely amazing and perfect, we're, we're really in a level of consciousness and awareness. We're allowing the energy to feel our own perfection and our own appreciation of ourself. So, uh, so important. Again, this letting go doesn't mean you kick them out the door or you play games and you don't answer their text. That's not letting go, right? Uh, or you play games and, you know, wait three days to call them back or whatever, right? If you're in a new relationship and all these silly dating rules, right? There's my fly buddy all back again. Um, it, it really is about energetically letting go and not trying to control it, right? I knew I should have gotten that fly out of this room before we started here. <laughs> Anyway, um, it's part of my reality. I'm going to love it. <laughs> all right, everybody. Uh, so thank you all for being here. And thank you for letting me uh, come into your home or your your car here and just share this with you. Uh, I, I really do tell you that the council's wisdom has changed my life and many people's lives in the most amazing, extraordinary way. And this awareness that you are creator within your own creation is one of the most powerful things as you come into the consciousness level of knowing this for yourself and the power you have within you, anything and everything really is possible for you. Notice when you're denying your power with the thought that you're thinking or the story you're telling, you just stop. Sometimes I just have to say stop it to myself, you know, say that thing out loud and you'll notice you don't really want to say it out loud. So then start saying the things that you want to think and believe about yourself uh, out loud and what's possible for you and have fun with it. Have fun with it. The answer to every question is you are a creator within your own creation. And in any moment, you can instantly manifest peace, love, joy abundance, well-being. It's all here for you and it's all available to you now <laughs> and always. <laughs> all right. Um, thank you, Denai, Christina, Jordan, Catherine, uh, um, Puzzler46, just what I needed today. Thank you. I'm so happy to hear that. Uh, much love to you all. If you love this, please subscribe to our channel. You'll find many other Journey of the Podcast, uh, Journey of the Podcast episodes. No, Journey of the Master Podcast episodes. <laughs> and go to stayorlanda.com. You'll find a lot of other free resources there. Uh, think about joining our Master's Class Advanced Program. It's an amazing community. We meet every Wednesday. We do live channeled sessions with Q&A with the council as well as the integration sessions that I that I do on the second and fourth Wednesday of every month. Uh, we have grand manifestations going on. If you want to learn how to channel yourself, you can also join our upcoming semi-private channeling group. Um, so much love for you. Thank you for being here. I wish you all a beautiful rest of your day. Bye, everybody. Love you too, Francis. Bye, Anna, Lucy. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you all for being here.